Hi, I'm Charlie Rodman, Austin criminal defense attorney, and I'm here with my law partner, Mariana Spiritu, and we're talking about a bunch of different things, but uh, this particular segment is going to be about occupational licenses in Texas. Um, so Marianne and I have both done hundreds, I mean, into the thousands maybe, I don't know. Over. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> a lot. Um, so uh, quite a few of our clients end up getting occupational licenses, and so I hope this sort of helps give you an overview of what to expect. Um, so let me start you out with this, Marianne. When, when do people need to get an occupational license? Do they need it the, the moment they get out of jail? No. Um, they need it when their license is suspended. And the, for a DWI, your license would be administratively suspended within 40 days of the time that you were arrested unless we request a hearing on the matter within 15 days. So if we don't request a hearing, your license will be suspended 40 days after the arrest. If we do request a hearing, it won't be suspended until the hearing is complete and the judge rules against us. Right, right. And so at, at either of those points, we start the, the process of, of getting our clients an occupational license. Um, what do our clients need to give us so that we can get them an occupational license? So generally what we need is the, their current address. We need um, their hours that they need to drive. Um, typically, I say that you can request 5 a.m. to 11 p.m., Monday through Sunday, um, because this is also not just for work, but also for necessities, groceries, exercise, health appointments. Um, yeah, so, so let's talk about that. Yeah. So even though it's called occupational license, mm -hmm. um, it, it doesn't just cover your job. I mean, what I, the way I describe it, I say anything that's not entertainment. Right. right. So if you're going bowling mm -hmm. uh, and you're not supposed to use an occupational license to go bowling or, <laughs> or to the movies. Right. OK. Um, but but I will say that the, the way it works is if if you get pulled over for speeding or something like that mm -hmm. and then you you're going to show your paperwork and your occupational license to the police officer and they're going to try to say, well, where were you going? You know, mm -hmm. and as long as you don't say bowling. Bowling. <laughs> I had a very interesting conversation with a, um, a client, he, he said, well, can I go to restaurants? And I mean, I get that restaurants are entertainment, but also, you know, some people just eat at restaurants. I mean, right. they can't force you to cook right. because, and, and so I said, well, I mean, it, it covers food. It's, mm -hmm. It covers necessity. And if like, if you just don't cook, if you eat out every meal, then that's, that's what that's for. So, okay, so actually, you were talking about hours, okay? Yes. But but I, I do want to point. There's mm -hmm. two types of occupational licenses, right? Right. So there's one that if you have the ignition interlock device uh, as part of either your bond condition or probation or some some part of like you've got an an IID they're called, then you don't have to limit your counties or times. Like so, basically the state says if you have a blow device in your car, you can drive any time with an occupational license. Okay? Right. Um, as long as it's not for entertainment, right? So they're comfortable. Now, if you don't have an ignition and unlock device in your car, then that's when there's these restrictions for times, and they give you 12 hours a day, um, mm -hmm. but you can't change them. Like, you have to define a week. Like, on Monday, I need this time. Tuesday, I need this time. Wednesday, I need this time. And you can break it up. So like you said, you can do one long block where you can say 8 a.m. to noon, 2 to 6, or, you know, like that. But... Uh, you can't change it, right? And so we have a lot of clients that are waiters or they have different shifts and they're just like, what do we do? Mm -hmm. And and the answer is we we have to just do the best we can, get the cover the most possible times and then take an Uber or take a Lyft, you know? You right. just, so we can't change it week to week. Now the counties, uh, we always do the, the local, you know, three counties, Williamson, mm -hmm. Travis, and Hayes, of course. But if you um, have to drive to Houston or Dallas or San Antonio, you have to put every single county, you know, list. So, so when we get when we uh, create an occupational license or file one for our clients, we ask them what counties do you need, and we give them lists and maps and stuff. So we're often putting in 15, sometimes 50 counties, because 
you know, you can't just put in Travis and Bayer County. You know, you have to put in every county in between because you have to imagine being pulled over on the highway by some small county police officer. And if, and if you show them your occupational and it doesn't have that county listed, that's a violation against the law and they'll, they'll arrest you. Right. Um, so, so, okay, so you've got these times – um, and counties mm -hmm. for one type, okay, not okay. for the ignition analog device, but they also have to get special insurance. Special insurance. It's um, called an SR-22 form, and it's not enough to just give us your uh, insurance card. This is a special form that the DPS has created, and um, your insurance company can fill it out, or you can go to a different, more specialized insurance companies uh, that just specializes in SR-22s and get an SR-22 from them. Uh, but it is, it, it's not a special coverage. It's literally a form uh, that your insurance company will fill out and file with the DPS. And when they do that, what the insurance company is saying to the DPS is they, they say, hey, DPS, because I have this form filed with you, if this client ever discontinues their coverage, then we will inform you. Because right now, like, you know, we don't, ha you and I, we don't have SR-22s. We can not pay our insurance and they're not going to tell anybody. Right. So right. that's what an SR-22 form so is. So the legislature has said, if someone gets an occupational license, we need to be guaranteed that they have insurance. Or that we need to be, the DPS needs to be told that they have discontinued it. So then they just go and turn off the driving privileges for the occupational right right so um so sr-22 insurance and and you know if you just google sr-22 texas there will be literally hundreds of companies trying mm -hmm. to sell it to you and people always ask what this costs it's you know it's different for different ages genders and age groups but uh, it's really easy you can just uh, these companies you just type in your name and date of birth and gender, I think, and it'll mm -hmm. spit out it's $80 a month or $40 or $120, whatever. So it's easy to figure it out. Like you can find that out in one minute on the internet now how much SR-22 insurance would be for you. Right. And so um, we'll need that. Mm -hmm. um, we'll also need proof of employment. That could be a letter from your employer on company letterhead, or it can be a pay stub. You want to black out, you know, some of the, like how much you make. Uh, the judge does not care about that. They just care that you have a job. And so uh, pay stub or a letter from employer and then. Um, Actually, and add, if you work for yourself, you can oh. write your own, say, yeah. I'm Charlie Roadman and I'm a real estate agent or, you know, mm -hmm. private and I do this. So basically we just need to give the judge something that's credible that you have a job. Right. Okay. Right. And then. A driving record from the DPS and that is something we ask the clients to get it you can get it online um, we ask for what's called an abstract and an abstract will will show the judge every instance of um, you know tickets suspensions um, it's, it, it is your complete driving history with the DPS and I think that's it. Well, if there's an uh, if there's an ignition interlock um, installed, then we need to submit proof that it is installed. Right, and there is a clerk's fee that, uh, depending on different scenarios, but it's mm -hmm. it's typically around sixty five dollars uh, right. to uh, one hundred and fifty maybe for a post conviction. Post conviction is a little bit more. It's like three fifteen. Okay. Yeah. So there's um, once we gather all that stuff, we e-file this petition and it goes to the judge and you know assuming everything's there the judge signs it mm -hmm. we get it back this copy to you we send the paperwork to dps for you because we've had we've back in the old days when we asked our clients to do it they, yeah. they would lose it yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we do it for you now and um and then dps will send a, an actual plastic card mm -hmm. um that says occupational license on it. Right. Okay. Um, I think that's yeah. anything that they, uh, I, so, so, okay, well, people do ask us this, like, so let's say we lose the hearing, the ALR hearing, mm -hmm. how fast can we get them an occupational license? 
and I say, you know, it, it depends on how fast they get us those things, right? right? And we give them instructions on how to get those things, because because some people can get all of those things in 20 minutes, right? Right? There's you know, some people it takes five days, mm-hmm. you know. But basically, we can get the judge to sign the order, or we you know the judge will sign the order within 24 hours, 24 hours, 36 yeah. hours if if mm-hmm. you know if you get it to us Friday at 4:30 p.m. It might be <laughs> trick to get to it Monday. It might be Monday afternoon. Yeah, you know, but uh, but um, it, it, the occupational license can happen pretty quick. Right, and then um, I did want to mention that there are some reasons why you would not be issued, despite everything that we d- we do, we file it, and despite the judge signing it, there could be internal DPS reasons why they will not issue you the occupational license, and it would be that um, your license was expired to the point where you have to retest. Uh, That's one reason why the DPS will not issue an occupational license. Um, If you have not paid your reinstatement fee. Now, if you go through us, we pay, we ask you for the money to pay your reinstatement fee. So Mm -hmm. we make sure that it's done. Um, But if you had been suspended in the past for any other reason if there are outstanding fees they won't issue it until you pay that off um right and that and that doesn't happen very often because usually when we're putting it together we're we see the problems there we anticipate them right but but dps uh, you know it's not like we can't go persuade them to do something (laughs) like they have a algorithm that if this then that if that then that and so you know it's a it is just sort of a computerized bureaucracy. Uh, so if there's a problem with your license, but but one of the things that we do is is um, we're able to anticipate these things and 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 generally respond and mm-hmm. and fix it or help you do what you need to do or get the stuff you need to get. So uh, so yeah, we we uh, we get people driving again. <laughs> That's <laughs> one of the things that this big part of this job. 